are you guys comfortable with that? Um, you do not have to have your video on if you do not want to, but it is up to you. Um, uh, I, if you're muted and you have a question, feel free to unmute and ask at any time while I'm talking. I, I prefer you guys to riddle the uh, conversation with your own uh, input and with your own questions rather than keeping everything till the end because sometimes we lose our train of thought. So um, just chime in at any given time. If you feel more comfortable typing it in the chat, that's fine as well. All right, so let me first share my screen. Yes, all right, um, just to check, is everybody able to see the, the presentation? Okay. All right, so uh, welcome to the presentation on the Department of Environmental Engineering and Earth Sciences. Uh, currently, we have four major programs and several minors and certificates that I'll get into, and we're looking to potentially add another major in the coming future as well. Our department is primarily comprised of eight full-time faculty. And so that means in any given class, you'll have anywhere from 12 to 16 students, but you can have courses that are as low as like six to eight students, uh, especially in the more upper level courses. All of us come from different backgrounds and have different specializations. Um, Dr. Anaya's background is actually in mechanical and environmental engineering. Uh, Dr. Finkenbinder is one of the geologists on staff and he is a specialist in sediment and which is far more interesting than it sounds. Um, so he is very interested in sediment and also looking at paleoclimatology. So trying to unravel Earth's climate history and make predictions moving forward. Um, Dr. Holly Frederick is um, an associate professor in the department on the engineering side of the house and she uh, deals more with bio biological, chemical and physical treatment methods. Uh, myself, when I had purple hair in ye old times, uh, three, four years ago, I'm another geologist on staff and my specialization is in geophysics, structural geology, tectonics, GIS remote sensing. So math <laughs> is basically what I specialize in. Right. Um, Dr. Carney can introduce herself, I think that'll be better. <laughs> well, I'm Dr. Sarita Carney. I'm one of the professors in the environmental engineering side. And my research focuses air, but I guess after coming here, I've been dabbling into wastewater and water as well. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Pralad Murthy, who is currently our interim dean uh, in the College of Science and Engineering. His specialization is in air quality and wastewater treatment, as well as engineering education. Uh, Dr. Marlene Troy is our chairperson, and she is a specialist in sustainability, remediation, and environmental management. And Dr. Whitman is a specialist in water quality and hydrology on the environmental engineering side of things. And so all eight of us play a role, in addition with a couple others, um, in delivering all of our programs. There is not one program that is just one set of faculty and none of the rest. Everybody plays a role, even if it's just for elective courses. We also have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Castor, who works half time in the admissions office and works on the Veterans Council. And he's also a lecturer. His background is in meteorology, especially synoptic and dynamic meteorology. Uh, uh, Mrs. Julie McMonagall, she is our lab manager and also a lecturer. She uh, is, has a background in geology and, well, more so environmental geology. And um, back in, gosh, like 20 some years ago, environmental science was still a fledgling field. And so environmental geology was typically what environmental science fields were back then. Um, so she uh, contributes to a lot of our uh, intro level courses and she manages our labs and is a huge godsend. And we have Mrs. Colleen Garrison, who is our office assistant, helps manage our social media and communicate with everybody and just make sure that we are fully functioning with, you know, 10 separate heads as a department. <laughs> okay. We also have a lot of emeritus professors and adjunct professors that occasionally will step in to teach courses. Um, and they include um, Dr. Case, Dr. Bruns, Dr. Halser, Dr. Redmond, and Dr. Walski. And so all of us with our individual specializations have expectations from the university to not only teach, but to continue research. And part of that research is scholarship. So we publish 
uh, pretty often with students and we present at conferences again with students. We have been involved in writing books, book chapters. We are a combination of professional engineers, professional geologists, and board certified environmental engineers. And many of us are elected as officers of professional societies at local, regional, and national levels. Um, so, you know, there's that common misconception that a lot of people sometimes have that, you know, your professors, all they do is teach, but we do a lot more than that. We try to stay connected and in the know and on the front lines of technology and learning so, and understanding so that we can deliver the best up-to-date content to the students. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we have four majors in our department. Uh, we have the Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Engineering, which is accredited uh, by ABET. Um, ABET is the Engineering and Science Accreditation Body, more so science. Just as of this year, they started to delve into science a bit more. We have our Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Science, which has pathways for uh, biology concentration or earth science concentration. So students really interested in ecology, I would encourage more under biology concentration. Those interested more in soils and water and air systems, I would uh, navigate them more towards the earth science concentration. We also have the BS in geology, which is for students who want to complete a curriculum and um, attain professional certification as a geologist, which is very similar to getting professional engineering status. Um, and for both engineering and geology to become a professional in those fields, you take an um, intro exam to kind of prove that you know the content. And then after training for five years as an apprentice, uh, essentially, you can sit down for a final exam to get your professional licensing, and there are many other expectations with that as well, such as continued education and learning, etc. We also have a BA in Earth and Environmental Scientists, Sciences, which is very broad. Um, it is designed to be for secondary education teachers, so this is a curriculum designed to prepare students to become high school teachers in environmental sciences, earth sciences in general. Um, one of the you know, scary st uh, statistics is that 60% of teachers in Pennsylvania who teach earth sciences have absolutely no background in earth sciences or have never had a formal course in it, which is you know, terrifying. Uh, we also have a certificate program in sustainability management, uh, along with a minor in sustainability management that is um, credentialed through the ISSP, uh, who handles uh, sustainability credentialing. Uh, we've proposed and are waiting to hear back about a certification in GI science, uh, geographic information science. And we also have minors in geology and earth and environmental science. Uh, Jerry, welcome. Um, by the way, I, I just saw I let you in. Um, please note that I am recording this lecture, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and if you have any questions at any time, feel free to jump in. Okay. Okay. So part of the reason that those programs are all put together under one department for us is because our work upon graduation is so interconnected. It is very rare to find environmental engineers working with just environmental engineers. They'll typically consult and communicate with environmental scientists and geologists. And the same is true for geology uh, majors and uh, environmental science majors as well. I, the crux of all of our disciplines is that we have to have strong backgrounds in chemistry, physics, mathematics, and biology because the earth system is complicated. And so having knowledge in all of those four major backgrounds is important for us to be able to better understand the earth and environmental systems we live in. We have several facilities on campus, including a dedicated GIS and remote sensing computer lab, a uh, water quality lab, air quality, hydrology, geology and rock and mineral lab. We have a tectonic physics lab. Um, actually, we've got several more labs than just that. And we've got lots of field gear. We are constantly out with students. We have our own um, vehicles. We've got our own canoes. We encourage our faculty to take students on field trips. And I would say that every course that you will ever take in our department 
will usually have at least one or two field trips associated with them. And those field trips can be anywhere from your three hour lab session to, um, for instance, in ocean science in this picture down here, I had taken students to um, Huron, Ohio, and we were studying an estuary system. So we left on a Friday and we returned on a Sunday and we stayed overnight in uh, res the research station and they had beautiful dorms for us to use. Um, so here are more examples of many field trips that we have taken. This is the um, ocean science field trip again. We have a lot of geology field trips, a lot of engineering related field trips to uh, measure stream systems especially. Um, and I know Dr. Carney takes students out for air quality measurements. Uh, so we are constantly outside and we believe that we should use the natural laboratory that the earth has graced us with. So that is our primary learning modality is being outdoors and being in the places that exhibit the features that we are talking about. A little bit chip in about the field trip. We also take you guys to the treatment plant because some of you might end up in working the treatment plant. So like water treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant or landfill, recycling center. So along with the other field trips, you are going to get a real life experience, a real life um, listening from the professionals who are working in the treatment plants and others. And, you know, in the time of COVID, we've had to adapt. Obviously, field trips were not always possible uh, during this experience. So we have made a whole series of different um, 3D virtual field trips. And so Dr. Finkenbinder built this 3D virtual field trip of the Hickory Run Boulder Field, uh, where we go to talk to students. And that's Dr. Finkenbinder contemplating his lessons, I suppose. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. Um, but here we take students to really talk about Earth's uh, glacial past and what was happening in Pennsylvania um, at, the, at, uh, at the time that the last glacial maximum was retreating. Right? So we've got a whole series of different approaches for how we give our field trips in the time of COVID, we adapt as need be. So I'm not gonna go through all the research we do, but we all are involved in a lot of research and we encourage students from early um, years to participate in research. Participating in research is probably the best learning experience for anybody. You get hands-on experience and you can you know, dedicate your knowledge to a specific facet, be published, um, you know, participate in field adventures and expeditions and participate in lab work, whatever is really skills that you want to hone and craft, and we will work with you to do that. So we do a lot of different types of research in this department, and we are, I think some of our, our furthest projects are up in Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, where the geology students also go for their field camp, um, all the way down to, gosh, we've got research all the way down in, I'm correct, somebody was doing something in, I was doing something in Puerto Rico, but I believe somebody else was doing something in Peru, but I have to remember exactly who was doing that. Uh, so we are all over the world um, for our research and not just local. So our department deals with a lot of contemporary issues. Uh, energy is one of the things that we deal with in our department um, in terms of thinking about the impact of energy on the environment, better understanding energy resources, where we can find them, how we can utilize them. Same with natural resources. Uh, we function a lot and think about sustainability. Uh, we want to create a world and an environment that is coexisting with our growth as a civilization. Um, Environmental chemicals, especially in an era following coal, right? We have to consider our impacts there as well. We think about our infrastructure. As cities grow and the urban demand increases, we have to consider, well, how do we treat wastewater? How do we treat um, the atmospheric problems if they were to arise? And really, all of this has been identified as um, a national security threat. All of that kind of encompasses and is involved in talking about climate change. So the National Security Council, a couple of years ago, identified climate change as one of the top threats to the United States in the coming years. And so environmental scientists, geologists, and engineers are all going to be involved in 
coming up with solutions and you know, managing and understanding the impact that climate change will have on our civilization. So this is the 2017 infrastructure. Um, a new one has not come out. Usually they come out every couple of years. I think the next one is supposed to be coming out for 2020, um, but it still has not been released as of yet. Um, but this just goes to show you that we've got a lot of work to still do to get America's infrastructure up to par. Um, while our railroad system is doing fairly well, everything else is a C plus or below, which is not ideal in terms of infrastructure grades. And, you know, with COVID occurring in the world, we've seen some really fascinating trends that I'm sure Dr. Karnick could speak of as well, but uh, we've had a lot of decreased pollution in the atmosphere as a result of people staying at home and lack of driving and utilization of resources. So it's really kind of thrown a wrench into how we would have our Earth Day 2020 report managed and understood because it's not really an, a proper evaluation of what we do on the day to day. Uh, pandemic is a severe circumstance. Uh, Dr. Carney, did you have something to add there? Um, I just wanted to say, I guess, like, I mean, it's some, I've been reading papers and trying to see what other researchers have been doing, and some found air pollution to get better or air quality to get better, but I guess some regions are still reporting worst conditions. Now, that's one of the research interest um, would be, like, why is it worse? Because there are no sources out in the road, and uh, in terms of waste, you know, now you're dealing with the new waste, not just your regular solid waste, but you have additional waste you have to think about. There's more medical waste now. Um, so things like that. I think that would be what um, would, we're going to research on or we've been thinking about researching or slowly start working on that. So which you guys, when you come in, you can chip in and develop your research skills as well as your knowledge to become engineer, scientist, or geologist. Right. Uh, so this is the 2019 U.S. Job Outlook. It's released a couple months after the end of each year, so the 2020 data is not yet available. And I'm sure the 2020 data is going to be very problematic because of everything going on in the world right now. So it might not be the best representation. Um, but the standard median pay is provided here in that first row for each of our different majors. Um, I always say this with a caveat, median pay is not your starting pay, <laughs> right? So your starting pay uh, in general will range anywhere between 40 to 65K, depending on what type of career path you pick for yourself. Um, the number of jobs has been growing in all three fields faster than the average in the United States. Um, environmental scientists are growing faster than most um, at 8% geology at 5% and environmental engineering at 3%. And, um, you know, with all of these, they do require bachelor degrees. Um, so it will be very difficult to go into these types of positions without a bachelor degree. The environmental engineering program actually took an award uh, this year and was ranked the 11th in the nation based on median early career salaries. So it was looking more at the outcomes of career versus the education students got. And so we ranked pretty high up there on that list. Um, and this was done by grad reports. This is just one of many different ways by which we can view our programs and think about how effective they can be. But our graduates do tend to get jobs in various industries from state and federal agencies as contractors. Many go to graduate school and um, many go into consulting and, and general broader industry. And they have been hired by some of the largest engineering firms and consulting firms in the region and internationally as well. Um, all of our students are also involved in professional development while they are at Wilkes. So we encourage students to network through conferences because you can meet industry professionals there, uh, professionals there, and we encourage students in some of our courses to update their um, CVs and resumes, and we workshop with you to provide you the best tools so that when you enter the job market, you're not just a student with a resume and a degree, you have experience, you have knowledge, and you have an understanding of what your career path will require of you. 
all of our students that are in the engineering side and the geology side are required to take their licensure first exam before they graduate. Um, you are not required to pass, it's just to show that you have taken it. And we also do provide certification as well. Um, as an environmental uh, professional intern or as a qualified environmental professional. We meet with our alumni a lot. In fact, I believe our homecoming is coming up in October and we're going to have a virtual pints with profs. Um, we typically get together with our former students and have a couple beers with them and see where everyone's been. Um, but this year it will be virtual and we not only meet with them in a social setting and to see where they're at and keep track of everybody and make sure that you know they they can contribute by telling us what we can change to uh, make the experience better for students but we also regularly uh, roughly yearly meet with an advisory council of industry professionals who have graduated from Wilkes and they guide us in telling us what industry is looking for and so we make changes to our courses and our curriculum every year based on that feedback right so some of that feedback is what initiated the geology program and what initiated um, our senior projects way back when so that industry advisory council is really important to us and that relationship with our former students is very important to us as well. We are involved as faculty in a lot of research, but our students are involved in a ton of research as well. And these are just some examples of uh, former students who have done some pretty significant research. Um, this is Dr. Halser with a couple uh, ex-students who uh, went to Yellowstone National Park and were measuring the ground inflation as it relates to um, volcanism. We've had um, engineering students involved with uh, Engineers Without Borders. Um, our students have won environmental challenges. They have won conference awards as well for having the best posters. And that doesn't mean they just make posters that look great. Uh, it means that the content of their posters were really high caliber. Uh, we've had a student go and work on environmental system, sorry, environmental engineering systems in Germany. So we encourage our students to gain more experiences outside of the doors of Wilkes, and uh, we hope that they come back and tell us what they've learned, and so that we can learn from them and incorporate it into our courses as well. Okay. Lots of other student awards outside of just purely research, uh, but uh, one of our Two of our students actually, yeah, two of our students published a paper recently with um, Dr. Whitman and Dr. Tom Walski. And uh, that paper got an award recently for being one of the most influential papers in that journal. And so that um, PR will be coming out on that fairly soon. Uh, but we've got a lot of students involved in a variety of different projects. But if research isn't your thing, we have a lot of student activities. We want to be very engaged with our community and we encourage our students to be just as engaged as we are. So we every year host the Earth and Environmental Science Day, which may be on a sort of hiatus for this term and potentially next term, but we typically bring students in um, from high school and they can go around doing experiments in different types of labs and learn about different topics to decide if the Wilkes experience would be appropriate for them. We do a lot of environmental cleanup. Um, we have the uh, Women Empowered by Science program that students can get involved with as well to help uh, elementary and middle school women um, develop STEM skills that will encourage them to enter STEM fields, thereby closing that gap uh, where females don't have equal representation in all the science and engineering fields. Every Earth Day, we do a major cleanup and we also participate in National Engineers Week as well. And if that still isn't up your alley, we have a lot of fun with our students in a variety of different ways. Um, we regularly go canoeing and camping with our students um, just for fun and to kind of relax a little bit. Uh, we have a senior golf outing every year and every year the faculty and staff of the department plays a softball game against the seniors who will let us win if they know what is right. Um, we may be old and we may not be as fast, but it's good to let us win and stroke our egos just a little bit. Uh, and a couple of years ago and last year, um, 
or sorry, the year before last, the Geo Explorer Club took, takes a lot of trips. Um, three years ago, we went to Hawaii. Two years ago, we went to um, the southwest of the United States to several states, to I think about five states. Uh, no, six. And um, last year, we were hoping to go to Puerto Rico, but that fell through, unfortunately. Um, so we're kind of on standby to see where we'll take trips this year that are more local. But there are a variety of different professional societies and student clubs that you can participate in. And these range across all of the disciplines. Our three largest clubs in our department are the AWMA, which I'll let Dr. Carne talk more about because I believe she's the, um, uh, not the chair, what's the advisor. faculty advisor? There we go. <laughs> well, uh, Air and Waste Management Association um, is one of the student chapters of Mid-Atlantic section. So the good thing about it is like Dr. Perini said, you get to go to conferences, you get to go present, and also we do some fun stuff. So along with um, what was shown to you on WEBS and National Engineers Day, so on National Engineers Week, we actually partner up with a local school and do like one full day of um, science experiments. So the teachers get a break and then you become the teachers and you do science experiments with the kids. Um, I guess to learn, show the implementation of the physics or the concepts they have learned. So that's one of the chances for you to evaluate yourself, like is teaching for you or do you want to be into teaching? I mean, not research, but maybe teaching. Okay. So, and then also we went to conferences, like I think we won the second place in poster competitions last year in, in Quebec, Canada and you get to go and I unfortunately I couldn't go because I had some other if, issues or some other things but the students drove by themselves had fun time in Canada and they drove back we were hoping to go to San, uh, San Francisco this year but that fell apart with COVID it was virtual conference but that's one of the organizations you would like to get involved and with COVID you I think one of the interest is indoor air quality so we partner up with Ashri because there are more mechanical engineers talking about the, the HVAC systems. So indoor air quality is, I guess it's predominant now as air, outdoor air quality. Uh, we also have the Students for Environmental Sustainability that I believe the faculty advisor for that is Dr. Troy. Um, and I am the faculty advisor for the Geo Explorer Club. Um, and we do everything from roadside cleanup to local trips to far away trips. Um, so uh, all of our major trips that are very distant, like this one was taken four years ago in the American Southwest, they are a week long over spring, spring break and we camp um, and we make the best of it. But there's a lot of other professional so societies we encourage our students to join and participate in. Uh, these are really great networking opportunities to bolster your resume and to also kind of put your name on the minds of the people who will be making decisions about your future jobs. Um, so these are potential future employers. Yeah, and I think another one you want to think about is the Society of Professional Engineers for Pennsylvania, but PSP is that's another one very active, uh, which involves a lot of professional engineers uh, who are in Pennsylvania currently working. So you guys have to take the professional testing or licensing exam. So that's one good way to network with already professional engineers in this area of your expertise or in the area of your interest and that will bring oh now i can't click anywhere that's good oh, go away all right um so what we believe makes our department um, really an opportune place for students to learn who have an interest in any of our programs is we have a strong adaptive curriculum. Like we mentioned before, we adapt our curriculum almost every year depending on what we learn from industry uh, through our students and through our own colleagues as well. We have dedicated faculty. Um, we work hard and we work together. Uh, we are starting to hopefully begin this philosophy of co-teaching, which I'm really enjoying doing with Dr. Carne and Dr. Anaya. Um, we have a very hands-on approach. We believe that learning is more than just what's in a textbook. If learning was what's in a textbook, why not just pay, you know, the hundred bucks to get a textbook and read it? <laughs> 
So we really want to push beyond and give you hands-on opportunities to really understand the nitty-gritty ins and outs of everything that we do. Uh, we focus heavily on field experience and field work. So we believe that you should be outdoors, like this picture shows, um, learning and doing because you know textbook cases are not always real world cases. Okay. So th this image here is, um, this is Dr. Finkenbinder and Dr. Holly Frederick. And these are two community representatives from North Lake. And these are four of our students. And what they were doing was they were testing water quality of North Lake, as well as bringing up sediment cores so that they could see how the water quality or how the, um, yeah, how the water quality has changed over time. And also to get a record of um, climate change in Pennsylvania in the region. And I believe the record that they found went back like two and a half or 3,000 years. So it was a pretty big record. We focus on undergraduate teaching. We do not have any graduate programs in our department. Um, we focus entirely on under undergraduate teaching. You may have TAs, but your TAs will never be teaching a course or a lab. They will be there to help answer questions in case the instructor is busy answering somebody else's questions. So we teach the labs, we teach the courses, we teach all aspects of the course. We are dedicated to that philosophy. Uh, we provide a lot of mentoring. Um, I have four Zoom calls next week with students, both past and present, who want to consider graduate school as an option. So I will be meeting with them each to go over their choices, what they want to do, and give them some guidance. Um, we have a lot of undergraduate research opportunities, both unfunded and funded. Um, we encourage internships and cooperative education opportunities. And Mrs. Garrison, um, our departmental administrative assistant, does a really great job and has created a virtual bulletin board, essentially, where she will post internships and job opportunities and any other sort of cooperative education opportunity. We also encourage study abroad opportunities. We had an exchange program a couple of years ago with uh, Panamanian students from the University of Panama. And they came for a term and studied with us, four of them, and we sent four students to study with them for the following term. Uh, following, yes, following term. Um, and we have a lot of interdisciplinary opportunities. Uh, we find that it's important students recognize that you may have a degree in environmental, you have a degree in environmental science or geology, but that does not tie you to those career paths. We need people well versed in those backgrounds to enter the political spectrum as candidates. We need people with those backgrounds to be writers and editors uh, to enter education so your career path can still be as wide open um, based on how you choose to design your career. It is not necessarily bound to your major. We also have a lot of student chapters of professional societies and we really do thank you for considering Wilkes and what I'd like to do now is just open it up for questions. I think that's hopefully going to be something that you have for us. Any questions that you're curious about or want to know more about? This is very informal so it could be anything as long as it kind of relates to the programs or to the content. So if you've just got a earth science or environmental engineering question, that's fair too. We will be happy to try to answer them. So any questions? So would the earliest one of us could start research be a uh, freshman year or would it have to start in like sophomores if we wanted to do that? Yep, you can start right out the gate in your freshman year. We might suggest waiting until the spring term let yourself kind of adapt and enter the school in the fall term, your first term. And then by the spring term, you have a better understanding of who does what type of research. And then at that point, we encourage you to absolutely just reach out and say, I'd like to be in your lab group and begin that process. Yeah, and you can actually gain course credits to participate in research. So you can you know, knock off your elective courses in all of our majors by doing research. I think taking that first semester to adapt yourself would be a good idea because you're transitioning from your high school into university and some of you might leave home and you might not have been away from your parents for a while or 
So you, you have to live on your own. So I think that first semester adjustment would be nice. And also you'll get to know all the professors in the department and research leaders. Any other questions? Jerry, I guess I have a question for you. We, we got to ask uh, Elise and Esther uh, as they were coming in, but um, where are you from? What are you interested in pursuing? Yeah, I'm Jerry Buena from Liberia, like West Africa. Um, I'm interested in environmental science. Okay. Um, where I want to study my first degree. I, got a, I attended the first uh, meeting with principal, uh, Junedon, I mean, with Junedon. And uh, he explained a lot about uh, your university, which is very important for me and also for my country. If I had a degree from there, I would have my environment also in my country. So I don't have much to say here now. I just want to tell you thank you and thank you everyone of people behind this great work. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I, I'll open this question for everybody, but what are your primary motivations for you know, choosing environmental or earth you know, content majors. Yeah. Yes, and in my country, Liberia, we have so many environmental issues. And maybe if you have to come to Liberia to see uh, the entire city of Monrovia, you're going to see that there's a name for uh, specialized people to be in this uh, area to be able to help the country because I do have a change that is taking over the, the, the ocean is taking and you have a lot of problems. Uh, you have a, a disaster, uh, many waste material. So you need people to have the clear understanding in this area so that they can help government and also plan to be able to uh, drop off some reporting uh, information to help the system. Oh, that's very admirable. Um, Elise, uh, Esther, what about yourselves? Myself, um, uh, oh, I'm... Oops. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go then. Um, I don't know. I just think that like the environmental aspect of it is just like really interesting to me. I love being outside. Um, we actually go camping a lot. So that part sounded really fun to me. Like all the trips you guys are taking and stuff. Um, and I think that like even just like environment as a whole is something really important. And like you said, like um, with the pandemic, a lot of like the pollution and stuff has gone down. And I think that's really like good. And maybe we could like incorporate some of that stuff into as we're going back to normal life. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, here's hoping. <laughs> and Esther, what about yourself? I just always like the environment. I especially just love being able to um, like there's a place nearby where I live where it's a little trail and they recently actually started um, I think they had environmental scientists and engineers to come in to like figure out how to like make it better because there was starting to be, be like a little pollution and it's starting to like go downhill but they fixed it but I just loved being able to like sit by the river and just watch as things happened so that kind of like influenced me so I of I I don't know at this rate I kind of want to be able to be someone who can like help like fix and monitor the environment and figure out if something wrong happens that sort of thing. Yeah it sounds like all of you have a, a vested interest in um, balancing human impact with uh, coexistence with the environment um, and I think that's really really powerful and that's probably many of the faculty's motivation to enter their fields as well. I was actually initially a mechanical engineer. And then I like to joke and say I saw the light and switched to geology. And I love what I do. 
I love the impact that it has on helping people and saving lives, even though many people may not recognize it. So my research is very heavily based in uh, studying landslides and studying um, earthquakes. So, you know, not many people think about those until the very last minute, which is not the best time to think about them. But Dr. Carney, what about yourself? Well, I think I stumbled into this accidentally. I did my bachelor's in civil engineering from India. So as a part of bachelor's, we have to do a final year project, like senior capstone project, like you guys are going to do eventually. So I did it on health impacts in coal mines. We have a lot of coal mines in India and the coal mines are not really ventilated. And so what it, we have water quality issues, air quality issues, wastewater issues. So I did my research project on that. But when I graduated, it was like all computer science. Everybody wanted to be a computer programmer. So I applied for a lot of schools into computer science program never got into any of them because my background is not in computer science. And I got into environmental engineering at Texas and m King Tool. So I came with the intention of coming here and switching into computer science program. But when I tried to switch into computer science program, they told me I have to take almost 12 courses prerequisites because my bachelor's is not in computer science. So I decided to stick with the program and I started loving it and decided to do my PhD. So I guess it's, it was not my passion, but I stumbled into it and I started liking it. You're on mute, Dr. There we go. Now I was gonna say, uh, sometimes we discover our passions by accident. So, and that's good. All right, uh, any questions that you have come up in like the last little bit or things that you're curious about that you're afraid to potentially ask? We're here to answer anything. Let me just step in real quick and tell you guys something. Like I joined this university after Dr. Karimi and I, this is my third year, but you wanna, the one good thing, I mean, you went up whenever you wanna decide whichever university you wanna go for, look if it's ABIT accredited and also um, look how the program is. Like if it has a master's program or a PhD program, like how much of uh, attention would you get from the faculty members? Uh, our, and most all our faculty actually have open door policy, I would say, uh, in terms of advising you not only with your courses or anything else. So, and our program is able to accredited for a very long time. And it's a strong program and we keep updating the courses based on the input from the graduates, recent graduates and the industry folks. So you are actually getting, I would say, a knowledge and you will be well, you're well prepared to go into the world of uh, the like, employment. Okay. Like even with pandemic, I would say most of our graduates got, did get jobs. They took some of them took time. They had some rejections because of the COVID, but um, they everybody found jobs. And I think Hannah, she's in Boston right now, right? That's no, she's in Wisconsin. So Hannah was one of my former research students and um, she applied for a lot of different jobs. And unfortunately, as soon as COVID hit, all of the jobs retracted those positions. Um, but <clears throat> she managed to land a job as a GIS analyst in, I forget the name, oh, in St. Louis. Um, is it St. Louis? No. No, she's not in Wisconsin. Sorry, she's in Missouri. What am I talking about? Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so she landed that and it only took her like two months after graduation to land that job. So she was able to get there pretty quick. Another former student, Mike uh, Yanchuk, who I'm sure Dr. Carne remembers, he landed a job immediately after graduating working with the local um, environmental protection agency. So we've got a lot of great success stories. And I would say, um, I think that we talked about the percentage last time, but we were something at like 80 or 90% success rate in job placements. And most of our students are, we encourage them to do internships and everybody lands up with an internship. Some of them want to do research, so they end up spending summer with us doing research, but doing the internships and I mean, I think even our alumni have, we have great connections, so they keep sending us um, job, if they have any posting opening, they keep sending us that information, which 
Ms. Gaddison will usually post it on the bulletin board. So I think we have got good ties to get you guys into internship and other job opportunities. And also the courses, all the courses have a lab component. That's what you want to look for. Because you just don't want to like learn the theory or the concept. Trust me, I mean, that I think you could do it if you have interest, if you have that, I guess the willpower, you could sit down, read a book and get that information or knowledge. But what you want to learn is what do I do in the field? What kind of difficulties would I face if I go into the field? Oh, maybe the sensor is going to stop, not stop, it won't work. So how do I fix it, right? Or how do I get to get to this water sample and I need to sample the lake water? Like, what could I do? Well, how should I do it? So I think those are the things you should focus on. And I can say with, I guess, with great confidence that this program has all of that. Every course has a lab, so you're actually learning the application. You're not just learning the theory, you're learning the application part which is very important for you when you get out and for your interviews. And all of our students tend to hang out with one another, support one another. We have dedicated learning facilities for just our students in our department. Um, and so we really encourage you all to work with one another to learn. You know, when you enter industry and, or your future career uh, goals, you will never be working in a silo. You will always be working with a lot of other people. So we encourage you to start developing those team building skills. And I know many people don't love it, but group projects um, really early on and continue to develop the skills that make you an exceptional candidate, whether you want to go into academia or industry uh, upon graduation. I mean, you take a class, you're taking with different majors, right, in your class. There will be somebody who majors in environmental engineering. There will be somebody who majors geology. So you're learning from them, like from each other also, because everybody has a dis different perspective and because their major is different or they have choice of different choice than you. Uh, they have some skills which you don't. So I think like you learn quite a bit even in your classes from your friends, which is good. So where I went to school, master's and PhD, all I did was take classes with only environmental engineering. So all I knew was talk to the engineer, but I never knew how do I talk or communicate with a science major or a geology major because they are in a different, um, I guess, level, a different education background than me. So I think you learn that over here, which, which is a very positive trend, I would say, with the program. All right, we're definitely reaching our wrap up point. Um, so if there's any questions, feel free to stick around and ask them. But if not, feel free to leave the meeting. And if you do have any questions at all, do not hesitate to email anybody in the department. We will be happy to communicate with you. Um, so please feel free to reach out. And um, even if you have questions about career goals, that's fine with us too. Um, we look forward to potentially having you all as students in the coming future. You could Thank schedule you. a day oh, if you want to, to attend the classes. I think like we could kind of uh, be in the background and get, get an experience of how the classes are going to be, right? We used to yeah, yeah, shadow. So yeah, if you'd like, like you can shadow a student um, and basically take a full day's worth of college courses at Wilkes to understand what we are like and how we function. All right. Excuse me, Dad. Okay. Dr. Bobby, excuse me. Yes. Um, can you please give me your email address? Sure. I'll actually put it in the chat. Um, let's see. Um, so it should show up on your end in the chat. That is my email address. And Dr. Carnes is provided as well. So feel free to email either of us if you have any further questions. Oh, did it not come in? Okay. okay, excellent. Well, have a great day, everybody. And if you have any other questions, just stick around. If not, please feel free to log off. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye, Lise. Bye, Thank Esther. You. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Hi, Jerry.